Hey, I'm Benny and you may remember me from a video called um, How to run Linux code on Windows using the Windows subsystem for Linux. And today I'm making a new video about the Windows subsystem for Android. <laughs> and that's actually a way for you when you're on Windows, Windows 11, that you can run an Android app natively in your Windows operating system. Might be very interesting for you if you're doing a React Native development, then you can easily boot up a device and then resize the window because the Android app will run like any other Windows app on your system. How that works? We'll look into it right now. So let's find out how we can install the Windows subsystem for Android. First of all, we need to go into the Microsoft Store. And from there, we need to install the Amazon App Store. So once the Microsoft Store opened, just check the search bar and enter Amazon App Store. From here, we can install the Amazon App Store and it will install as a prerequisite the Windows subsystem for Android, as we can also see in that little notification. Yeah, Amazon App Store only works on Windows subsystem for Android, so that will be downloaded with it. The Amazon App Store will then be our first Android app through which we can download more Android apps, but we are not planning to do that now. Yeah, we just want to use the Windows subsystem for Android. So let's find that from our start menu. That's the real cool thing about the WSA, that all the things become natively integrated here in Windows. So we will also see apps in the Windows start menu. From here, we can then select the Windows subsystem for Android and look what we can configure. As developers, we are interested in the advanced settings and in here we'll find a developer mode. If we turn it on, then it doesn't have any effect yet because we first need to start the subsystem. We can do that by clicking on manage developer settings and if not already started, it will start our Android emulator. In here we will see the developer options screen of an Android device, but we can simply skip that for now and check out how to connect actually to this device. At the moment, we don't see any IP address and that's due to a bug. So simply turn on and off the developer mode. Yeah. Have you tried turning it on and off again? No, we haven't. Now we did. And now we see that ADB can be connected through this IP address here. ADB is the short form for Android Debug Bridge and it will allow us to communicate with our device through the command line. If you haven't installed it on Windows, you can download it and install it on Windows natively. But if you watched my video about the Windows subsystem for Linux, then you can also download it simply through a Linux package. In the case of Ubuntu, that will work through the advanced package tool. So we can simply call apt install adb, which will download the Android debug bridge for us and make it available. If you run into the case that apt cannot find adb, then you need to add an extra repository, in this case called universe, and update your package list to then find also the ADB on your system. Once ADB is installed, we can try to connect to our device with the IP that we copied before and connection refused. It's not going to work out of the box, at least in my case, because I'm now trying to get from my Linux, from my Linux subsystem to my Android subsystem. And I need to find a different IP for that. Let us quickly look up IP config. That might also help you in your case because in here we'll find more IP addresses and let's have a look at the IPv4 ones. I see that there's one here configured locally and there is another one over here starting with 172. Let's take the 192.168 one because it's a local one from my router and if I replace then the given IP with the IP here through my router then we'll see that it will work because we are going to see the ADB debugging pop-up. We have to allow access from our computer to make sure the connection gets established. Our console still states that it failed to authenticate with the device, but let's rerun the command just to be sure. And then we'll see that we are already connected. So the connection now got established after accepting the pop-up. I do have a React Native application here that was built using TypeScript. And this is the one that I would like to deploy now on my emulator that I installed through the Windows subsystem for Android. The application uses Expo, so it will be the one that then bundles our app and makes it available. So by starting npm start, we'll call Expo start under the hood, and then 
will get to see that our project is up and running. Now we want to connect it through the Expo Go using Android. So let's press A as uh, shown here and suggested by the command line. And when we are doing that, we'll see some warnings, but they are not of interest for us. What is interesting is to see that Expo here actually found our subsystem for Android and is now downloading the Expo Go app. The Expo Go app is a native Android app that will be now installed in our emulator. Afterwards, it will start that Expo Go app on the emulator. At least in the happy pass, I would like also to show you the unhappy pass, which we'll see in a bit. So here it crashed, it failed to talk with the activity manager. So we now need to debug this. During my investigation, I figured out that it's actually a networking problem, which is why I want to show you how you can tweak that in case you have similar issues. What we need to do now is actually going to our Windows subsystem for Android and configuring some experimental features. But first of all, let's close the running instance. And then if we go back to our settings here, Windows subsystem for Android, then we also need to make sure that the device is turned off. Yeah, there's a nice button for it. This gives us a clean state to work from. And then we can check out the experimental features. In here, we'll see a toggle to share the networking settings. So that's uh, what we will turn on and then manage developer settings. If we click that button, will lead to restarting the emulator, which we can see right now. Switching back to our React Native app, we will give it another retry. So let's uh, run npm start again and then see what happens. There's the Metro bundler and let's now press Shift and A. Shift and A will give us an overview of all emulators available. And here we see that now it looks a bit better. Yeah, it uh, is bundling the Android app. We'll get to see green complete messages and we will also see that the Expo Go app just opened. And then here's our app. Yeah, we can see it as a native um, Windows window, which means we can snap it, we can minimize it, drag it around. Yeah, all these functionalities are now available through a native Android app on Windows. And it will also scale pretty nicely here. So that's a super nice and convenient way to test also the responsive design of your app. Again, the big plus for the Windows subsystem for Android is that we get native Android apps integrated into native Windows. So we have an overview here of all our installed Android apps. We have the App Store from the beginning and our side-loaded Expo Go app that then hosts our React Native apps that we built in TypeScript. If Android development is your daily bread and butter, also check in the memory and performance section. There you can allocate more memory to your Android subsystem and you can also choose then a dedicated graphic card if available. Also, the window focus mode might be interesting for you because you can make it independent so you can focus Windows and Android apps at the same time. So depending on your use case, that might be interesting for you. There are also some more experimental features, the local network we've seen, and you can also pick the Vulkan driver, but this is um, yeah all experimental. Let's have a look at some startup options, because if you don't want that the Windows subsystem for Android always starts with your Windows, you can change that in the startup options. Yeah, for those who um, yeah, want to save some memory and some performance when booting up the machine, then make sure that you disable that here. Yeah, in my case, it's uh, by default enabled and I would like to disable it to not boot that subsystem every time I boot my computer. I hope this was all helpful for you and that you will make good use of the Windows subsystem for Android. If you have questions, just let me know. I will also link you a video with Scott Hanselman explaining why this VM is so fast and so lightweight.